Hello, I'm Josh with Delisle, the designer blacksmith, and this video requires an introduction, just so you know what's going on. I'm making this, which is a handrail for the Tower of London. All those nails that I made in a previous video, they also went to the Tower of London. They were to install the floorboards there, for the new West Wing, I believe. With that design I just showed you, it has to be traditionally blacksmith with tenon joints, out of 40 by 40 solid bar. And I've been doing this under the new DIY power hammer that I built. To rivet it all together though, requires a special tool. So as you can see, there won't be any welding involved with this. It has to be all riveted together. But when this is fully assembled, I can't pick this up and put it in the fire. It's just really impractical. Nor do I have oxypropane or oxyacetylene which is a gas for heating up those rivets and riveting them over, the tenons, I mean. So I've got a very special tool to make, the induction forge. Right, I've got a lot of work to do in a very short amount of time, so I'm just gonna roll into making. See you in a bit. Thank you. 
Okay, welcome back. Now, before we get into all the parts and accessories and you're excited about buying all the bits and making one of these yourself, let me just stop you there. Do not buy one of these. They're rubbish. They really are. Although it looked really impressive what I just showed you. You have not got any more footage of me making that railing because I was so angry and frustrated that I couldn't get this to work as I wanted it to. Uh, but we'll discuss it further. We'll go into all the nooks and crannies of this. And if there is anyone who has light to shine into this, do check out what people say in the comments below because professional people who know about this stuff will most certainly comment and tell me what I've done wrong. So listen to these people. They are interesting. Just be kind on there is all I will say. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a PCB that I got off Amazon for £75 for induction forging. Um, it's 2,500 watts and runs at 48 volts, which is why you've got this. This is the power supply. This turns 230 volt um, AC current into 48 volts DC current to a maximum of 3,000 watts, which roughly is 60... 8 amps I believe. We have on the back here a 50 amp breaker switch. Reason being is this PCB is rated to 50 amps. Um, whether or not that actually does anything because that's actually a 2 uh, 30 volt uh, breaker switch but hopefully the amps remain the same but if anyone can shine light onto that that would be amazing. Now I had made some special features, it's all water cooled, it goes down to a little tank and uh, if I detach from my tank it goes down to this really cute and I already recommend one of these 12 volt pumps. This was fantastic and gave just enough water to pump through the coils. This is a custom coil that I made and it's all press fit so these just simply pop off and this can detach and a new coil put on. Now this is the type of coil that it comes with but obviously when you put bars through that the inductive um, magnetic field won't uh, do very much so I had to create a smaller one and get that current, that inductive field to heat that steel up nicely. Now how do I think an induction forge works. Well, if you know how an electromagnet works, it basically, as a current flows through a coil, um, it creates a magnetic field. So lots of electrons whizzing around it. And in the center of the coil is where the most concentration of electrons will be. Now, an inductive coil means that there's a switch. It's AC. It goes, alternates forwards and backwards extremely rapidly on a certain frequency. And when you put your bar of metal in, um, the electrons pass through the metal, but they're almost like uh, stuck a little bit. As they try to break out the other side, there's a delay where they're almost trudging through treacle, it may seem. Um, but as they're trying to get out in, in and out, you've got more electrons forcing their way back in. Um, so there's this build-up of electrons within the material which then equates to lots of heat and that's what the heat is, it's electrons escaping, heating that metal up super quickly. hope that's an interesting analogy, um, it's how I understand it anyway, but correct me if I'm wrong. So why do I think this is complete trash? Well, I had a great idea to start with in I realised that a welding machine produces 20 to 48 volts of DC current and if I set the maximum amps to 50 then surely a welding machine can power one of these. Great idea you say. But what I didn't really realise is that the hot start function on most in, um, inverter welders um, doubles the amount of amps within that first split second. So if I wanted 50 amps in one of these, it would actually cook it to 100 amps and then go back down to 50 amps and I destroyed an entire PCB, not really understanding what was going on there. So I thought, how about I get a welder that just does um, 50 amps without hot start. So I got a, a, um, a buzz box, which 
I didn't realise is alternating current. Did you know that? Did you know that a stick welding buzz box was alternating current? Anyway, I cooked another one. I did get a bridge rectifier to try and turn it into a DC um, welder. So a bridge rectifier, but it still wouldn't work. And uh, I cooked another one. So fourth time round, I decided to get a breaker switch. That's this little one right here. And bought the proper power supply that they recommend. And it all looks like it's working. Wrong. It's still cooking itself. It's, I can see it, it's smoking and all these little bits here. And I don't know about you, but it makes me think that these aren't as efficient as they would seem. Seems very green and energy efficient, you know, using direct electricity to heat up steel. But all the gubbins in this heat up so much and there's a lot of waste energy there, I believe. Not only that, but all the gubbins that it's made from aren't actually very good for the environment to produce anyway especially if they don't last and you have to keep replacing them over time, which is what it seems is happening with this. But anyway, I think if you want to heat up stuff like this electrically, resistance using a arc welder would be your best bet. To actually clamp both sides and have maybe water cooling through those clamps, a bit like the King of Random's uh, metal melter. Exactly that. You're using electricity and the resistance of the electricity passing through the material to heat it, heat it up. I think would be better than one of these. Now, I completed that railing for the Tower of London and I actually used my TIG welder to heat up the rivets to forge them, which seemed to me like a really backwards way of doing it, but it was the most effective way that I could without using, say, oxyacetylene or oxypropane as a fuel with a torch to do it. Now I don't have those bottles here, as you can see I've got a tiny little workshop, it wouldn't be very wise to have big gas bottles like that around here. So I thought one of these would be really good. And I even bought myself a little ammo box to mount, mount it all in. See? I splashed out, went to town on it. Thinking this would be an awesome video for you guys to get involved with and start making your own induction forges. But it's a turd. It's no good. Do not buy one. But anyway, I'm definitely going to use that pump. I don't know what I'm going to use this for. But it doesn't suit my needs. I think I'll go back to using the old traditional coke forge and my welder. But anyway, love to know your thoughts. Hope you enjoyed this video so far, even though it's an incomplete video. Uh, and very frustrating for me, but I've got lots and lots of projects to come. I've just been very, very busy, which is why I haven't been able to keep videoing stuff. But if you keep subscribing, keep liking and encouraging me in this, um, eventually there will come a point where I will do this full time for you. At the moment I've still got to do the normal day job, but with your support we can move forward. All the very best and see you in the very next episode. Take care.